Hello friends, welcome to MathFax. Now, it is the first video on interesting integrals and in this series, I am going to show you some integrals which are almost impossible to solve. I mean, obviously they are not impossible, they are very much possible, but they are a little bit tricky, you can say hard and most of all, they are interesting. Okay, so the first problem which is written here and you can find it right here. Okay, so this proof we have to do today and now let's start with this one. Let's start with the proof. First of all, let me tell you guys two things. When you encounter this type of integrals, you can do any two of the methods I say. First one you can do backwards and then find a reduction formula and then you can find the generalized result. Or another thing that can be done, you can think this one as uh, log x, you can substitute this log x with some any other variable and then you can proceed as Okay, I personally prefer substituting log x with something. Okay, so let's substitute. I'm doing all my substitute in this part of the board. Okay, so the first one, first substitution is log of x equal to z. I'm substituting it with z. Then it is dx by x equal to dz or in other words dx equal to x dz or again we can say one thing that dx equal to e to the power z dz I hope you guys understood because log of x is equal to z therefore x will be e to the power z now let's substitute here so the limit becomes when you put 0 in place of x the log of 0 is minus infinity so this one is minus infinity when you put 1 in place of x it is log of 1 so it is 0 ok now e to x to the power z m it will be converted into e to the power m z okay and this log of x will be z to the power m and then again dz is e to the power z dz or we can convert, uh, write it in a simple way m plus 1 z okay dz okay now now we have arrived at an integral where there is 0 and infinity let it be though it is minus infinity still it is an infinity 0 infinity is there and e raised to some power and there is a variable and it's the same variable raised to power n it is here we have got now we need to think about this thing what does this reminds us just think obviously it reminds us about the gamma function in gamma, we have everything that this one has. Okay, just some differences are there. That one has 0 to plus infinity, here is minus infinity to 0. So we can substitute this z variable into something which will convert this one into gamma function. And how to do that? Let's see. What we need there? When in the power of e, we should have e to the power minus of something okay so the power should be minus of some variable so we should convert this entire thing into a new variable minus of a new variable okay so substitution number two here we are substituting this m plus one z with minus u okay and what we are getting we are getting dz equal to minus du by m plus one okay then lots of things are going to do. So first of all, this minus infinity, if we put it here, it will be converted for u, it will be minus infinity in this side, minus u in this side. So this one will be u equal to infinity. I mean the limit for u will be infinity. This one will be zero, obviously. And then e to the power m plus one z will be converted into e to the power minus u. Then z will be converted into minus u by m plus 1 whole to the power m dz will be converted into du by m plus 1 see what things are happening first of all here is one minus 
it is minus du actually here, minus du by n plus 1. Since here is a minus, minus du by n plus 1. So if we take the minus outside and then we convert this limit, it means from 0 to infinity, then this minus is neutralized. Again, we have this minus 1 here, minus 1 into u. So if we take it outside, it will be converted into minus 1 whole to the power n. Yes, we are reaching there. Also, m plus 1 whole to the power n and another m plus 1. So m plus 1 whole to the power n plus 1. Okay, I think we have got it. So I think we need to rearrange here. Okay, so. If I write it properly, it will become e to the power minus u into u to the power n and then du. But we haven't yet reached to the gamma function yet. But rest of the portion is done. Minus 1 whole to the power n and then n plus 1 whole to the power n plus 1. And then here we have c. For gamma function, we should have e to the power minus u into u to the power n minus 1. But this n is not this particular n, but this n is an integer. So we have to write it in this way, e to the power minus of the variable into the variable to the power some integer minus 1. How can we do that? A simple step. We can do it in a very simple step. e to the power minus u into u to the power n plus 1 minus 1. I think the trick is done. Okay? So this portion is our own gamma function, our very, very, very much own gamma function plus 1 and this portion will be gamma of n plus 1. And what is gamma of n plus 1? It's n factor. So minus 1 whole to the power n into n factorial divided by m plus 1 to the power n plus 1. Nothing feels better when you prove a difficult integral problem. Okay? Thank you guys for watching. Just share, share these videos. Please do subscribe this channel. I am going to upload some very, very interesting mathematical topics. Okay? Stay tuned. Wait for the next video.